All right, Coach Roof, uh, thank you so much for taking some time. How are you doing today? I'm great. How about you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Yeah. So what uh, many UCF fans maybe might not know about you is that you actually were at UCF for once before back in 2011 for a, a short while. So I just wanted to kind of ask, well, what, what's it like to be here now after so many years and what's kind of the difference from the UCF you saw then versus now? Well, it's great to be here because uh, for me, uh, at this point in my career, it's all about people. We've got great people here that have a vision for continuing to take this program forward and, and obviously the jump now in the Power Four and the Big 12. Uh, so there's a lot of excitement. I think there's a plan in place for success, uh, which is which is so important. You know, a lot of people can be excited, but having a plan to be successful is another thing. And I think there's a solid plan here in order to help, help this football program and this athletic department be successful. You reunite with Coach Gus. Yeah. Uh, what's it like working for Coach Gus? You both have, you know, had so much success together with that. You know, what's it like working with uh, for Coach Gus? It's fantastic. You, and you know, uh, like a lot of the great head coaches that I've worked for, he's got a very, uh, very strong vision uh, for what he wants it to look like, and some very strong beliefs. Just like Coach O'Leary, you know, a very strong vision, a strong set of beliefs. Uh, he's a strong leader, and he's able to articulate that vision. So that way. As assistant coaches, we can help make that vision come true because his vision needs to be our vision. So there's alignment, and there's a lot of there's a, there's a good alignment here, and uh, it's been it's been fantastic because he's about the right things. Uh, he cares about the kids, and at the same time, he's tough and demanding, and uh, that's what you want. That's what you want out of a leader. Coach. So Coach really ended up going really hard in the transfer portal on linebacker. His linebacker death was quite a concern last year. So yeah. what was it like? So what's it like coming into a linebacker room that has kind of been the subject of attention over the course of the last couple of seasons? Well, you know what? I don't know what it's been here like over the last years about the linebackers, and that's not my. I, I'm I'm here to, to worry about this year, and you know, as college football has evolved with the evolution of the transfer portal building teams and the, the cohesion, the trust, the respect, the relationships that go into being successful. And, you know, to, to develop that, that's that's been a big part of the offseason that we spent a lot of time with because, you know, when, when everybody stays at the same place four years and there's normal turnover where the roster turns over maybe 20 players a year, that's much easier to do now with the, the rate of the roster turnover. There's so many new faces, and, you know, that our roster has changed since, since spring. You know? We're committed to doing it uh, through the high school ranks, you know, recruiting through the high school ranks and building a program through that. But at the same time, you know, there's specific needs to be able to, to go into the portal and address a need. And I think that, uh, think that we've done a good job of that. And uh, again, just our guys building and bonding and, and build the team because that's such, you know, that's something that, that gets so overlooked. Everybody talks about stars and stats and this thing, but just building the concept of team, that's such a such a big deal and you know we work at that when you got here but for the returning players do you watch what they did last year on film to get to know them or are you the type of coach that wants to see it with your own eyes in person starting in the spring i'm both okay so here's what i did uh the graduate assistants and the analysts made a 10 play cut up of everybody's every player's positive plays so that way i, I watched every single player on defense and, and watched what they could do I, We'll figure out what they can do. That'll be that'll be obvious. But I want to know like what guys could do because I think as coaches, our job is to put our positions, put our players in positions to play to their strengths, and ask them to do things they can't do. And then obviously, you know, work on the weaknesses or the areas of improvement. But you know, to, to ask our guys to do what they do well and then work to to improve the other things and improve the things that you do well. So uh, that that's that was the process. When you look at a situation now with college football today, it's a very offensive-friendly uh, sport. No huddle. That's the understatement of the year. I, I'm, I'm got, yeah. I got your back, yeah. Coach. Yeah. Okay. So, as a how do you adapt to that? Where you know, there's a lot of challenges now as a defensive, st uh, uh, you know, front side of the ball, where yeah. you, you got to deal with you know the, the speed of the game and all the different spreads that are going on in the sport. How is it? Uh, different now as a defense coordinator what it was say 10 20 years ago well it's much different than it was 20 years ago you know but I, I think it's like most industries and most jobs you either adapt or you perish and uh you know so we had to find ways to adapt and, and have answers for, for things that you know we need to have answers for certainly with the tempo and the, 
a horizontal spread of the field now, <laughs> making it defend the entire width of the field and the entire depth of it. Uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's a different challenge, you know, and, which, you know, offenses try and create space, and our job is to eliminate space, because yeah. space is our enemy. So, you know, the, the ways that we do that and the ways that our, our, our pre-snap process and our process of communication, things like that, it's all, it's all really critical. And, uh, you know, but again, you adapt or you perish. Yeah. yeah. How, how does working with Gus Malzahn sort of help with that? Because Gus has been one of, like, the innovators in Correct. terms of offense in, co in college. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's fantastic because, you know, if you don't do that nowadays and you play teams, like you're going to play teams that do, to try and get your scout team to emulate that, it's almost impossible. So that's a wonderful thing for us because every day that's what we go against. You know, so when when the other things happen, those are like, you know, if you said, okay, 10 or 12 years ago, like we won the national championship uh, and all the we were together. You know, we, were, we played really fast. And Morgan, the team we beat in the national championship game, played really fast. So that was something that you saw them like, they were scoring 50 points a game on people because people couldn't, they couldn't emulate that. Well, again, we did that every day in practice, but at the same time, you know, coach understands the edge of physicality and things like that to be able to line up and run the ball, and, you know, for, force us to constrict gaps, you know, attack blockers, defeat blockers, disengage from blockers, fit and tackle and take jack. So from that standpoint, with, within that overall concept, that that's still a a big deal because if you can't do that, you can't win. You obviously, when you won the national title, Cam Newton, quarterback there at Auburn, we're now practicing against KJ Jefferson. What is it like seeing KJ Jefferson and trying to defend him? Uh, it's, uh, it's it's certainly challenging, you know. But again, uh, it's it's good for us. Uh, you know, so to play against a, not only a quarterback like him, but you know, we're also the way we run the ball, our offensive line, our running backs, uh, you know, and the way that we spread out and throw it around. So. Because uh, you got to have numbers, you know, you got to you got to get your numbers right defensively, and at the same time, you've got to be able to present looks where you disguise, you know, where you show one thing and then once the ball snapped, you do another. Uh, because of now with the check game in college football, where they check the sideline, it's coming from the press box upstairs, and some in some instances, in some instances, it's coming from the play caller on the sideline, but some instances, it's coming from the guy in the box. So to be able to to not become predictable or not, here's what it is, you know, so they can't check into the perfect play. What do you want your defensive identity to be, and what's one thing that no matter what, you want your defense to make sure that every game they do blank? Okay, there's three things. There's three three pillars of our defense. Number one is what we call championship strength, the strength, how hard we play, right? When people put on our tape, I want them to say, man, those guys, they strain, okay? In terms of physical aspect of it, you know, you want our guys to, to take pride in how physical they are, whether it's defeating blocks, taking on blocks, tackling, whatever it is. And then the third one is to be efficiency in our execution because, you know, so many explosive plays are caused just by bust and to eliminate those busts and force the other team to, to beat you. So those are the three things that we want to hang our hand on. You've known Gus for quite a long time quite a long time. What is the biggest difference between the Gus Malzahn you first met versus the one you, that you see right now? Um, Gus has always had very strong beliefs and, and how he thinks that you know, football is. And I, I, I have a lot of respect for that because a lot of my beliefs align with that. Uh, but, you know, he was new. He was new in college football when I worked with him. I, I think he'd been in for like four or five years maybe. Uh, he's much more, obviously, much more seasoned. Uh, you know, he's had a lot of success. And you know, as far as change, uh, he's got some very fundamental things that he's believed in. But at the same time, there's a common sense approach to it. And, and I'm not saying that's changed, but that's just who he is. And, and you know, again, to lay out a very clear vision of what he wants it to look like for the coaches and the players, so that we can get ourselves in total alignment. So what about him? Like, because obviously you were like, you know, his, you know, you, you were his counter, you know, his coordinator counterpart at Auburn. Yeah, it was so, good because we competed against each other every day. Yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> what? So what? So what about him made you want to like work work for him here? Gus is a good man. Gus Gus treats people the right way. Uh, he 
cares about people. And I, you know, that's you know, that's what you want. You want everybody in the organization to feel valued and to feel like what they do is important. And uh, he certainly does that. And, you know, he's a he's a good man. He's a good friend. And, you know, a guy that uh, you know that I wanted to work for. He, he guys, guys talked about kind of being more himself this this year. I mean, you know, obviously you've known him for quite a quite a long time. Have you kind of seen that? From I wasn't here last year again, so I don't know. Like, well, like if talking with him, if you ever talk, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, we talked, but uh, you know, who he is is the reason he got got to this point. You know, and, you know, everybody everybody needs to be true to themselves. Right? You know, that's we're all looking to get better and all looking to improve each and every day. But at the same time, the only way to do that is to be yourself. And, uh, well, and we talk about chemistry with players and, and Bonnie. You obviously talk about this defensive staff as a whole. As you get to know them, they get to know you. Yeah. Now, how do you build that bond and make sure everybody's on the same page? Well, I think what you do is you spend time together. You give a, a clear vision of what you want, you know, and be able to articulate what each each technique looks like uh, within, the, within the system in which you're trying to coach. And, you know, uh, these guys are good guys, man. They're good guys and good coaches. They care about kids. They're good husbands, good fathers. And, you know, for us to, to be a team as well, that's that's critical because so many so many more organizations crumble from within rather than without, from inside forces. So for, it's critical for us to be on the same page. And, uh, you know, we are. If I put you in charge of college football, is there any rule you wish that, that would be, something that would benefit the defense uh, or, you know, that you would like insult in, added to the sport or taken out? Like, or are you pretty much, hey, this is the way it is? Well, I have no choice but to be this is the way it is. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, if you put me in charge of college football, uh, I'd probably say the offense has had to hold. Nice. I love that. <laughs> what is the biggest thing you think this defense needs to do between now and week one? Uh, this sounds very coaching cliche, but just get better every day. Uh, you know, there's gonna, it's it, incremental improvement. You know, there's going to be things that we do. Each, we're all going to make mistakes every day, but, you know, the, the incremental improvement, because if you, if you incrementally improve day by day, all of a sudden after 30 days, you're, you're now it's, what, 28 days to it, right? You've gone this far, as opposed to as opposed to that, but to continually to get better every day. And you got to be intentional about that to have the right mindset. And you know that's we constantly talk to our players about that, about their mental approach to the improvement process. And you know, so far, it's been good. Got to continue though, but because it's you know this is just day three, man. We're three days, three practices, and that's like everybody still feels good. In a couple in a couple weeks, everybody's going to be beat up, and then okay. Does it look the same? Is the mindset the same as opposed to getting distracted on other things? Who have you seen in this linebacker room that you think is in store for a really big year? Well, I think there's several of them. Uh, you know, I think Sean Pace has just got a chance to have a big year for us. Just, again, these guys, this is going to be year one in the system for us. So there's a, there's a, there's a blend there of being uh, multiple, but at the same time not doing too much. You know, so that's that's kind of on us as coaches, on me as a coordinator, to, to have the right to have the right the right volume. And uh, you know, he's had a, a good camp so far, and shown shown some some flashes of being good and uh, really great. And I bet I've been, been pleased with the way he's developed. You know, he's growing. He's growing. Uh, Ethan Barr, from a consistency standpoint, from a stabilization standpoint, has been fantastic. So. You know, and, and then we got some some, some younger guys. You got a guy like Josiah, not a younger guy, but a guy like Josiah Pierre who's played a lot of football. That you know is like the, the uh, a glue that can uh, the, the Swiss Army knife that can do a lot of things. It brings a lot of things to the table. And you got some younger guys like Xre and Andrew that have you know have really flashed, and uh, I think can be good players as well. But you know, we all got to prove it every day, man.